Hello, welcome or welcome back to today's class, the second class in this series Getting Better Day by Day. And in today's class we will look at how the movements, certain movements of the pelvis relate to the movements of the neck and head and also how the movements of the eyes, certain movements of the eyes influence or support or hinder even the movements of the neck and head. So how do we connect internally? Today's class is packed, full, packed to the brim, tightly packed with a lot of movement experiments and movement games. So please play or pay close attention. And if you like to join, uh, we will get right into it. So please come to rest on your back. We will start on the back. And as almost always, take a moment to arrive at the floor. Yes, to really rest on your back, to wait a moment for your breath to become even. You relax more and more to the floor. And meanwhile, while you are doing this, you can feel or sense how you're lying. Are you lying more to the left or more to the right? Do you have a perception of being even, like the left leg is the same as the right one, or maybe there are big differences in how you perceive your midline or your heels, how your feet are pointing in your sensation, in your feeling, as opposed to how the toes are really pointing towards the ceiling, just for example. And as a first movement, as a reference movement, just lift your head to actually look at your feet. How are your feet resting? So a look, a little look of the head, but actually a little lift of the head. Just once and bring it back to see, to feel, to sense how heavy is it to do that. Do you take a curve to the left or a curve to the right? Or do you f did you feel like you come up? you brought your head up in the middle. And let's try the same thing with the help of your hands. So maybe interlace your hands or just like in the previous lesson, get hold of your head and with the help of your hands, lift your head. So let your head rest in your hands and see how you, how you do that. How do you lift your head with your hands? and let go again. So, in theory, there's a big difference between lifting your head with or without the arms, without the help of the shoulders. And maybe in practice as well. So, as promised, we will look at the pelvis, at the pelvis, movements of the pelvis first. So, please bring your feet to stand so that your feet are standing and the knees are pointing towards the ceiling, you're resting on your back. So with this starting position, this allows the pelvis to roll, to move, but how, <laughs> how does this work? So how can you roll your pelvis downwards towards where your feet are, like you would roll the pelvis downwards towards the direction of your feet downwards, which means your lower back or the middle of your back might lift a little bit from the floor so that your pelvis, and actually if you start to think about this rolling, what is your pelvis? How do you, so maybe close your eyes and really try to perceive what is the bony part, the bony bits of your pelvis, the sacrum, the back plate of your pelvis, or the left part of your pelvis, ilium, or the right part? Are you lying more to the left or to the right? You might feel a little rim, a little midline in your sacrum. And when you roll further, you come to roll onto your coccyx, a little tailbone, 
it's also called cold, is it? So how do you, how do you, how does your body give you feedback that your pelvis is rolling apart from your conscious effort to roll your pelvis forwards a little bit gently, ever so gently, I need to say ever so gently, <laughs> a little push, but how do we do this? And the other direction as well, to roll the pelvis upwards towards your head, so you, your lower back comes into contact with the floor a little bit stronger. So the lower back might press against the floor. The tailbone, the coccyx, might lift a little bit off the floor. But again, the question of the midline. We want to explore this a little bit more. How do we roll the pelvis? forwards and backwards and ever so gentle, S slower and slower and you approximate a state of rest, <laughs> not of deep sleep, so that would be a step too far, but you're going into that direction of letting go more and more and still doing the work of rolling and start to perceive more and more details of your rolling. rolling the pelvis upwards into the direction of your head and where is the when you don't do anything where is the resting position this center position of your pelvis where the pelvis is just resting and where is the area where you roll it downwards And how can you, again, make yourself feel comfortable with that movement, feel safe, so that it stops being an exercise and it's just like a movement exploration or something you do because it just feels nice to roll your pelvis, to feel the, start to feel the details of how you rest against the floor, how the su floor supports you and enjoy the being able to move, to roll. There's something built into us that gives us joy of movement. And why shouldn't it be that way? Because we're built to move, aren't we? As opposed to the sofa, which <laughs> should just be there or the carpet or any inanimate object. So we are built to move and there's something that gives us joy if we do. Now we can roll the pelvis with or without the help of the legs, just like we can lift the head with or without the help of the arms. So how to roll the pelvis without the help of the legs? For example, with your left hand, get hold of your left knee and with your right hand, get hold of your right knee, draw the, your, knee, your knees up so the feet are in the air. Or you can cross the arms, whichever helps you, whatever helps you to get the feet off the floor so the feet cannot push against the floor. And with that configuration, try to roll your pelvis. So roll the pelvis without the help of the legs. So the pelvis needs to roll by itself. Difficult business, isn't it? So that's a <clears throat> maybe an abuse <laughs> of the core muscles or a repurposing of the core muscles of the back extensors and the belly muscles to be able to roll the pelvis without the help of the legs. So maybe you need to wiggle a bit and try a bit until you get the hang of it, how to, how to roll the pelvis without the help of the legs. Maybe it's just a very small movement, isn't it?
And then at some point, take a short rest, extend your legs again on the floor. So we take a, a break, so to say, to be able to look at the movements or at this movement lesson with fresh eyes. So just a short rest to have a pause, a break. Feel how you rest now on the floor. Do you rest a little bit more to the left or a little bit more to the right? <laughs> or do you rest on your exact midline? <laughs> how do you perceive your midline? And isn't it true that we have so many ways to rest on the floor? It's not, <laughs> we're not cast into a coffin while we are alive, but we have so many possibilities to place ourselves and Maybe one way feels more comfortable than the other or more, we are more accustomed to a certain position. But we don't need to eliminate all the other options just because we love one position or one chair or place the most. And then bring your feet to stand again. So you're resting on your back with your feet standing, the knees pointing towards the ceiling. And this time push with your feet a little bit against the floor. And when you push with your feet and you keep your upper body in a mode of relaxation, <laughs> then when you push your feet, you might feel that the pelvis rolls upwards towards your head. and your tailbone lifts and maybe your sacrum lifts. So that's the beginning of a roll of the pelvis. And when you do the opposite, when you lift your feet a little bit, not much, not just enough to lift your feet off the floor so you can keep your feet in contact with the floor. But if you just take weight of your legs, if you lift the legs ever so slightly, you might feel Oh, this helps to roll the pelvis downwards towards the feet. So this is how we use the legs to roll the pelvis, to help roll the pelvis, to either push with the feet or to pull with the feet on the pelvis, to roll the pelvis. Yes, you can try this a little bit more vigorously to get the feel of it, to get the sensory, sensory input. Ah, this is rolling, ah, and this is pulling on my spine, and the spine is pulling on my head, yours, mine. So when you roll the pelvis downwards towards your feet, your chin is being pulled towards the chest, and when you push your pelvis upwards, your chin is pushed upwards, so the chin comes up towards the ceiling. Right? Is, is, this is what, is this what is, what is happening? Is this true, what I said? So we use the legs to roll the pelvis, just like we use the hands to lift the head. And why not try a combination of it? So, like in the last class, again, with your hands, get hold of your head, and lift your head while you roll your pelvis upwards towards your head. So you push your back, the middle of your back against the floor. So your spine rounds, is, you're in a flexion. Your tailbone comes off the floor and your head comes off the floor. How far? How far? What's the distance between the floor and your behind, the distance between your head and the floor. Or you could try the opposite as well. You roll your pelvis downwards towards your feet and at the same time lift your head <laughs> and see how the rolling of the pelvis downwards when your chin is actually pulled towards your chest can help to lift the head
And again, allow yourself to feel, to sense, to dive deep into this world of sensation and exploration. So that's, that there isn't like one exact right way to do it, but there's options. Because you're organic, I'm organic. And we're built in a way so we can move in many different, in all the directions and can work and can manipulate the world, get in touch with the world. So there's not like one line. Of course, biomechanically, one line might be more advantageous than the other, but within its constraints. But we can adjust <laughs> to our alignment or our pathways and make that the ideal line with a side bending like, and all the other parts follow sweet follow sweet yes to support emotion do you know do you understand do you, like when when you come up not in the exact middle to the left and you accommodate that movement with a side bend with your pelvis with your legs then this is the easy way to do it we have this possibility to adjust and to choose pathways and choose them with our whole self, with our whole being. And it's not for us to do the mathematics and the biomechanical experiments in the lab, but we are the laboratory, we are the class, we are doing the class, we are sensing, we are sharpening our senses improving our ability to sense, to feel, to perceive, to evaluate, to put things together, to judge the results by how easy something is, how good it feels. And of course we might be wrong, so we stay open-minded, but we also might be right, <laughs> don't we? Then take a rest again. And we move on to the second part of the lesson where we look at the eyes. Ah, how can the eyes look at themselves? So just rest on your back and bring your attention to your eyes and roll your eyeballs, it's called eyeballs, roll the eyeballs upwards towards your hairline so you roll your you can do that with eyes open or eyes closed or maybe you will find that when your feet are standing that supports the motion but our main movement now in this segment of the lesson is to roll the eyes upwards and let go again so feel how you're resting on your back, bring your attention to your eyes and roll the eyes upwards like you would look upwards, not forwards towards the ceiling, but upwards where the top of your head is and then let go again. So we have a home position where the eyes will fall to when they rest and then you have the position of looking upwards. And do this a couple of times. You look upwards, you look upwards, and then let go again. Let the eyes fall into their home position. And is that a little bit to the left or to the right? Do you take a curve? Is it straight? Does the lifting of your eyes, the rolling of your eyes, eyeballs upwards, does this affect your head? When you roll your eyes upwards, do you feel you move your nose upwards as well, which means you slide the back of your head downwards towards your feet? So when your nose, the front part of your head, moves upwards, the back of your head moves downwards, like a 3D perception of your head.
But there's more than two points, the home position of the eyes and the upwards positions. There's everything in between. So how many stops do you have? One, two, three stops? Maybe you can try introducing a couple of stops. You can try introducing a very smooth upwards motion as if you would spot an eagle in the sky and then, or an airplane, or maybe just your finger pointing in the sky and your eyeballs roll upwards ever so gently, so smoothly, without jumping. So can you, can you make that a smooth rolling, that you roll your eyeballs bit by bit by bit by bit until you reach the top position, hold it there and then let go again. And then give your eyes a short rest, take just a short rest on your back. And then bring your attention back to your eyes and try the other direction to move your eyes downwards. Roll your eyes, eyeballs downwards to look towards your feet. And here also see if is it, is it a jump? So is it easier for you to look downwards than it is upwards or was upwards easier? So that's something very peculiar and I've seen both with students. For some students it's easier, a lot easier to look downwards and for others it's a lot easier to look upwards. Or maybe it's the same. And what does this mean? We don't know. We don't care. We just look. It's not a critical looking, but we just look at how it is. How is it now for us, for you, for me? And how can you roll your eyeballs downwards slowly, bit by bit? So is that easier or more difficult than rolling the eyeballs upwards, bit by bit? And every time you let go, where's the resting position, the home position of where your eyes choose to rest? Is it on the horizon or below the horizon? And when you roll your eyeballs downwards, do you feel your head is moving downwards as well, rolling downwards as well? Now let's try a combination. Roll your eyeballs downwards and at the same time roll your head upwards. So your head rolls in the opposite directions of your eyeballs. So when you look with your eyes towards your feet, your head behaves like as if you would look upwards, but your eyes actually look downwards. And the opposite direction, when you roll your eyeballs upwards to look up, roll your head downwards. So your nose is coming closer to your chest while you're looking upwards. So we can do this while sl sliding the back of the head on the floor. Or you can do this with lifting of the head. So lots of suggestions here. Let's try this together. With your hands, get hold of your head and lift your head. And while you lift your head, look downwards towards your feet and then bring your head back again. And the next time you lift your head with your hands, look, roll your eyeballs upwards while you're lifting the head. So your eyes move in the wrong direction. So you lift the head as if you would look at your feet, but 
deliberately, you look upwards towards your hairline. And when you bring your head down again, you look downwards. So let the eyes roll in the opposite direction of your head. So that's a differentiation. <laughs> Which might make it more difficult to lift the head. And then you can use your eyes in the same direction again. So with your eyes look to your feet and the head lifts towards looking to your feet. And now we also try to bring everything together, the movements of the eyes, the movement of the head and the movement of the pelvis. So can you review that from the beginning, the rolling of the pelvis downwards and upwards? And then we have the lifting of the head and the rolling of the eyeballs. And there's so many combinations, so many combinations, so many ways to combine these three segments of yourself and how they can interfere with each other or support these, each other and, and try to feel that. Try a couple of different combinations of lifting and rolling and without being too scholarly, without being too strictly structured, pick a few, a, a few combinations to try, like rolling your pelvis backwards and lifting your head and rolling your eyes upwards or downwards and see what supports each other, what movements seem to obstruct each other and do they really or is it just your habit if you try it a little bit slower a little bit more gentle maybe a little bit with a curve you come from the left or to the right a little bit slightly next to the midline maybe suddenly it becomes free available available easy comfortable ah oh that didn't work before and now it's now it's a lot more available. So play a little bit with these movements and movement combinations of rolling your pelvis, rolling your head and rolling your eyes and how everything, generally speaking, connects. And then ease into a last rest, stretch out on the floor, feel how you rest now, feel your possibilities of lying on your back, where you have your legs, how you feel one leg and the other leg, one arm and the other arm, the orientation, distances, weight, pressure, ease, lightness, comfort, safety, confidence, <laughs> what words can you come up with? What sensations occur to you that you can put into words, that you can name?
And for a last time, lift your head to look to your feet. Not just to look at your feet per se, but to observe how you lift your head, how easy that is now, or how available that is now, this movement of moving your shoulders, your arms, of lifting your head, your eyes, of orienting your senses towards your feet, and letting go again to rest. And of course, as always, we want to know how is it, how can we transfer that into standing? How will it be when we are upright as humans facing the world? So let's end this lesson, this class today. Please come to sit and to stand and let's see how it is in standing. Alright, thank you so much for watching, for participating, thank you so much for your support, for making these videos possible. It was my pleasure to teach you this class, to present you my ideas and movements and see you in the next video.